today's episode of Parker's Reefs, we review Adrian's incredible 8x3 foot mixed reef. Hi all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. I'm here with Adrian Smith. Are they right? Nice. <laughs> um, and he's going to take us through his incredible eight by three foot uh, mixed reef tank here, and uh, tell us a bit about the journey and the story and um, where it's at now, where it's going to be in the um, coming months, and um, just yeah. what makes it run. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Sam. Now I'm. Um, oh, where do I start? Um, <laughs> I suppose I've sort of gone this size tank more for. I like a bit of everything, oh, colour-wise, species-wise, uh, I love my fish as well. Currently at the moment I'm actually going through quarantine with all my fish for about the 10th time, but this time we're doing tank transfer method, so hopefully we get it right. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's a bit uh, un unlikely lack of fish at the moment, but at the end of the day I'm hopefully I'm doing the right thing and uh, it all works out in the future for it. Um, so this is my quarantine setup that I've got running at the moment. Um, I've had all of the fish go through tank transfer method quarantine processing. Um, I actually had uh, the guys uh, Sebastian and Ben at Atlas Aquariums do the tank transfer methoding for me because I work uh, away a lot for work. I work a week on week off roster. I just don't. I'm not at home to be able to do that process properly. Uh, unfortunately, I would have liked to do it myself, but yeah, anyway. So this is the, the holding part of the fish now that they're all done before they go back into my tank. Uh, so we've got a 90 day fallow period in my tank with no fish, uh, obviously to expel any possible chances of any white spot reproducing and, and eggs finding hosts again, etc. Um, but yeah, it's basically just an IBC open cut, we've got a sub skimmer. Um, I've got some max spec uh, blocks in there. There's a couple of pieces of rock and some shadow that I've gotten from um, Mr. Thomas Cheer, the uh, tank transfer method king. <laughs> He's uh, just lent me a those just to add some bacteria and add a bit of, because um, I've got a few rats in there, I think that more natural sort of stuff for them to peck at is far more beneficial than just bits of pipe and, and that sort of thing. It just gives them that, that hopefully there's a lot of pods in there that they can Know, feed on and get used to and, and adapt a lot. But yeah, it's pretty basic just to do the job, just to get them by and hopefully everything goes well and I don't have any losses and they get back to the tank safe and sound. So the purpose of the tank, the fish being out here is so that your tank can run fallow for X number of days so that yeah. all the white spot, if there's no host for it there, the white spot will die off. Exactly, yeah. That's and these fish have been through quarantine, so they're white spot free, but you don't want yeah. to add them back into the tank when the, when the white spot is still in its die off Theoretically, cycle. Theoretically, yeah, there yep. could be eggs and, yep. and yep. you know, free floating protozoas, sure. I think they are. Yep. Uh, they could be, obviously, re host the fish, um, sure. causing the whole break, break again and going um, yeah. through the processes all again. So, yeah, right. so something, because I do have a lot of fish in there, uh, there's probably about 30. 34 fish all up, um, a lot of big teams. I'll have to be doing probably, uh, I'd, I'd say the whole system will probably be about a thousand, 1100 litres, so sure. I'll probably do a good 900 litre water change every week just yeah, to right. make sure, again, keep the nutrients down, helps with the fish's health, that sort of stuff. Yep. So, yeah, yep. just, you got to do it, eh? So, how, how far are you in to the process? So, I'm, I'm a month in now, so I've still got two months to go. Okay, so, out of the way there. Suck it up, princess. It's got to happen, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I Fair bought enough. I bought four IBCs just to get this process going properly. So yep. when I, because I use artificial salt water, yes. so I'll have to store all of that water for a week, transfer it into another IBC for a week before I actually use it, just so that it just eliminates any further risk with everything. Because um, I don't use artificial salt water, it, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it can be. Um, a little bit, you know, questionable. Yeah. You don't do it the right way. So, so I've stocked up on everything, and it's just it's been a headache. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, fair I want the best health for my fish, and hopefully never look back and never worry. And for sure, anything future that goes into the tank will be quarantined and fish yeah, or coral, yeah. etc. So yeah, 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 fair enough. The 
it's good that you care so much about the health of your fish, but what about the health of your car that's sitting out here exposed um, to, the, to the right? salt water? <laughs> <laughs> You've had to pick one passion over the other. Oh no, that, and that's 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 no, not never going to pick over a car. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, good love stuff. Me, love me, GDR. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see it out here, and I'm like, ah, oh, needs a needs a good wash, though. The humidity, <laughs> the salt. Oh. <laughs> nah, it's only short term, only three months. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's hope so. <laughs> nice. I was designed everything pretty much the way I wanted. Um, I put my partitions in my sump, in my baffles in my sump where I want them. They hold my plumbing. Planned it for probably 12 months prior to actually putting it together. Um, John Byford from Crystal Clear Marine, he built the tank. I designed it the way I wanted it. He built it, um, put the stand welded, and then built all the cabinetry and everything myself as well. Um, how long has this tank been running for? So I've had this going for probably about 18 months now. Is that uh, all? Yeah, yeah, Let's get yeah. Get to this stage, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it started with just everything was raw. It was, it was uh, real reef rock and Walt Smith rock. Uh, there's yeah, a couple right. of pieces of live rock. Um, dry support everything like that. So I didn't actually add any um, Dr. Tim's or anything like that to really spark that bacteria. Uh, cycle, it's just sort of all happened naturally and a lot of water changes in between to keep those nutrients down to, you know, balance and stabilise everything. So, yeah. So it's talking about water changes, run us through your life support system, what, what's involved in maintaining a tank like this? So, initially when I first started, I had to do pretty much a thousand litres a week in water changes for probably the first four to five months because I had quite a large uh, bio load of large teams. Okay. Um, there was quite a lot of water changes taking place to again to keep those nutrients down. Now, not so much. I'm doing probably a thousand litres every uh, six, five or six weeks. Um, okay. Just to again keep nutrients down, keep the coral healthy, keep the water conditions healthy, and that sort of stuff. But noticing the support acts is just really going well with keeping those nutrients down because uh, I do have a lot of fish in here usually. Tell us about your super apps set up in there. You've got a couple of chambers of it. You've got a, you, it looks like you've got an air stone under it. Which yeah, so mainly two different sections there. I've got a little bit in my first section as well underneath my filter socks, but obviously your first section there with your aeration is more for your phosphate reducing bacteria and then your nitrate reducing bacteria in um, that second section more than anything. And you run the air stone just at night or 24 seven? Yeah, or? so 12 hours on, 12 hours off. So yeah, okay. at night and then uh, during the day it's off sort of thing. So yep. Yep. yeah, um, obviously a lot of Cheeto as well, again for nutrient reduction. Um, I've got some macropore in there just for, for water clarity cleansing that sort of thing. Alga reactor, four filter socks, which fill up pretty much every week when all the fish are in there. When you say four filter socks, they're four seven, seven inch. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, the seven inch um, nylon ones. Yep. Yeah, it's. Uh... Well, now, now you've told us about the life support and what's involved, tell us about some of your. I mean, obviously at the moment you're going through a bit of a uh, quarantine with your fish, but I mean, the tank is still thriving coral wise. Can you tell us about. I mean, you've got such a broad range of species and types and colours and things and that, but what's some of your favourites and... Um, well, at the moment it's funny, hey, like, I honestly think the fish do so much for the tank uh, with their waste, obviously it's, it's food for corals essentially as long as it's not exuberant amounts, um, but I've certainly noticed a lot of better, much better polyp extension on a lot of the corals, especially acans, the Monty, the red Monty Digiotata, that's been it's just come along a lot better. I don't know if it's the fish pecking it out all the time because there's a lot of tangs maybe pissing the corals off a little bit. Um, I'd say that's more the case. But nutrients have been really good. They're really low all the time now. Obviously, it's borax with such a good bacteria. Um, stability in there is really helping it to stay stable. I'm actually having to just fake feed just to keep um, get yeah, in get something yeah. in there. Otherwise, I've lost one or two pieces recently because the, the phosphate's bottomed out. Sure. But um, yeah, oh, yeah, I love my lobos. I was going to say, uh, uh, put you on the spot. I've always <laughs> two or three pieces. Is your always, favorite. always love my lobos. Um, you get a nice variety. Just of the colours, the polyp size, I suppose. Yeah, it's it's quite good. 
Um, I've really taken the, that red scroll in one field really like that. That's starting to get some good shape now. I like um, the position you've got that in the tank too. That's going to go out really nice and then yeah, yeah. that sort of... Um, Hope so, yeah. It's, it's hard to know, isn't it? You can only sort of assume and, and, True. and, and plan and I'll certainly probably do plenty of trimming and that sort of stuff to keep things not fighting all the time and yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. But yeah, it's... I love this um, blue and red you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, oozing out of the yeah, um, crease yeah, yeah, in the yeah, rock yeah. there. It's, it's actually yeah. getting quite shady now. They must have grown a little bit, those other guys, because it used to be quite full in uh, in light. But um, yeah, it's sort of, it's shaded off a little bit now. It's looking good. But like me, um, hammers, love a hammer garden. You know, it's probably one of the better, better crops to have for movement and everything like that. The colour availability now too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about your um, flow and your lighting setup. So flow, I don't really have a lot of um, power heads so to speak, I've got um, MP60 and MP40 kept it all yep. up uh, on the end, on the weir end of the wall. Um, I've got two return pumps, I've got one that runs direct to the tank and I've got another one that feeds a chiller and also a manifold which then feeds my algae reactor uh, also as well as another couple of uh, for the macro core reactor and that. Sure. Um, so yeah, that's about it really for flow. I find that's pretty sufficient. Everything seems to be happy and healthy in that. I'm, yeah. I've thought about putting something up on the other end, but I just, I, I, I just want to keep it clean. Yeah, always the yeah. challenge of peninsula. You don't yeah. want to have cords and things hanging exactly, up there. Just yeah. that look. I think if I was to do anything, I'd probably add an MP60 to the MP40, and that's about sure. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The MP60 provides a significant amount of flow, even though it's eight or three. It still pumps up water around pretty good. So yeah. But, um, so that's lighting. the flow, which is probably, for a tank this size, I mean, I hope I'm not being unfair, it's probably understated, but yeah. um, your lighting setup is it's definitely not understated. Yeah, it's so a serious bit of kit. Radians, I love, I love my Radions, um, so Radion Gen 3 Pros, uh, the two, uh, two in this, the offset ones there, they're yes. the wide angle lenses, Okay. other ones are as normal, and then I've got two T5 running down either side. Uh, Blue Plus and Coral Plus ATI bulbs on each of those. I custom made this the rack just to have easy access as well as um, incorporate the angle of the lighting that I want and everything like so. Basically got like the, uh, the hood. Yeah. The hood pin there so you can yeah, lift it yeah. up hold it there, yeah. It's, um, I don't know, maybe a bit of an eyesore to others, but it's it's functional, it does what it needs to do, and it's I think that's the, the, the point of the exercise more than anything. I don't really want to enclose it because obviously it's just getting so much heat out, leaving it open like that uh, during summer, etc. So, yeah, it's... Um, sort of, how many hours a day are you running your T5? So I'm only running T5s on a fairly low schedule, so I'm running the blues for... Four and a half or five hours, and the whites um, for four, three and a half hours. So okay. it's only an hour's difference, but yeah. um, I just figure I might get a little bit more bulb life out of it as well. Yeah, yeah. Plus the LEDs, so they're there on the twelve-hour um, yeah. sunrise sunset schedule. You've got five radians over the tank, which is um, yeah. It's a fair amount of light. So yeah, it yeah. It's not going to need a lot of supplementing on top yeah. of that, but I mean, yeah, I guess your T5s will give you a good spread. Exactly, um, yeah. It's sort of cover it. both both worlds. Um, yeah, yeah. I went for the five rather than four, less shadowing and that sort of stuff with the LEDs in yeah. between each yeah. each beam. So, yeah, it's sort of. But uh, it's, it's certainly working out well. I've been very happy since I've installed the T5s because yeah. they came in about 12 months after I had the LEDs running. I can really notice the impact of growth and that ex extra with colour and that sort of thing also. Yeah, right. Nice. And, um, with T5s, yeah. Have you got any uh, tips for either new reefers or people that have been in it for a couple of years just looking to take the tank to the next level? Well, <laughs> where do you start? <laughs> <laughs> new reefers, yeah, I suppose, mate. It's, it's really research and listen to those that have experience that have done the stuff and experience the failures and, and, and learn from that uh, big time. That, that's probably essentially the best thing you can do. Um, you, can, you can read as much as, as you want, but to actually experience it and, and then take that on board is probably the best thing. Um, yeah, mate, there's plenty of experienced people out there. I think they don't need advice from me, so. Oh man, no, yeah, you take what suggest otherwise. I yeah, reckon okay, that cool. 99% of rivers out there would absolutely trade the left yeah. limb for a tank of this quality. So um, no, no, just just enjoy it. Hey, don't try. 
I, you know, I put a lot of pressure on myself with because I work away a lot. It's it's hard to keep an eye on everything, so I try and keep my, my maintenance to when I'm at home and sure. keep everything automated as much as possible without too much computerisation and that. Um, but yeah, it's enjoy it, hey. That's what it's about. Nice, nice. Yeah. Good one. Oh, well, thanks for that. Appreciate you showing us your tank cabinets over here pretty late on a um, ah, what night is it? It's a Friday night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in an airport all day, so I've kind of lost track of days and time. But, um, no, thank you, Sam. Really appreciate, appreciate it. Lot, and, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing some of your goods at uh, Frank's Stock Queensland tomorrow. Yeah, wicked. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Cheers. Okay, so just as this video ramps out, I'll just give everyone that's watching um, just a little reminder if you can like the video and subscribe because I've got a whole heap more footage coming from my um, Queensland trip, including some uh, more people's tanks, some shops, and also a um, pretty incredible uh, wholesaler for some corals that ship all around the world. But uh, just before we go, I'd like to uh, just remind you then that Adrian said he's got um, some frags coming for Fragstock Queensland, and that's because he's got this frag tank set up out the back. Now Adrian's just set up a uh, business called Colour Me Coral and um, he stocks some incredible range of Zoas, um, SBS, some LPS, you name it, he's got all sorts of bits and pieces there and let me tell you, having seen them in person, they are mind-blowing. Check out those candy apple red Zoas there. I can tell you now that a bunch of those are coming home with me and uh, for those who love seeing things under blues, this is the um, frag tank under complete blues. So um, as you can see, the colours really popping there and um adrian's one of the best guys to deal with in the business so um if you're interested in any of the stock he has jump onto facebook and uh, look up the color me coral uh, page which you're about to see a screenshot now and um yeah get in touch with adrian and uh, get some of these amazing corals for yourself thanks guys bye